Hey guys, quick video. I was just thinking about some things. I'm always thinking, but watching a little bit of 60 Minutes, and they had a, a segment about this man. Uh, he's he's a genius when it comes to uh, DNA and the markers and DNA, and he he's he's an older man now, but he worked real hard in his field. But I was thinking about a hundred years from now, the human race will be destroyed or they'll be so far advanced until we will be invincible. There'll be a race of, of people that the majority of the people want in their society, who's ever in charge. And right now it's the white race. So the most likely will be the white race who determines the ratio of people and, and who's going to be what and what role are they going to play. Maybe a superhuman, but I guarantee you it will be the white race that will be super. And... I don't know. It should be some kind of oversight so they don't do that. The the minority of the race would be left out in the cold and they'd be dumb and a slave race of people. But how do we know they haven't already started doing that? Because the they know where the less desirable races of people live, what countries they're from. And they know how to exterminate races without even going in and killing them. All they have to do is go into their seed the the um when they begin to have babies and things and miscarry the babies or or make them dumb, but I don't think they want to do that because that would be a burden on on the people. So they might have it where black people, Mexican people, and whatever race that's less desirable, where they can't even have any children. They can do that. And they could make the white race, which they would say is the more desirable race, they could make them have the higher IQ and have them have multiple children. They would probably be test two babies, but they're doing that now. Take, for instance, the Kardashians and how they're having these babies and surrogate mothers. And so I don't know if being smart is a a good thing to do. I don't know, but I wish I could transport myself into the future and tell somebody please don't do this if somebody go back in the past and make mankind not do this but i was talking to um, a friend of mine on the phone we talk a, a lot and oh man he he could go on and on about stuff but he seems to think that god won't allow that to happen and i said can we take God out of the equation then? Because where is God and where was God when this happened and that happened? He says God allowed this to happen. Okay, so God is pulling the, the lever behind the curtain, uh, behind the scene, making all this shit take place. So... This God is a mad scientist then. Because you think about it. If he did do this, he's a mad scientist. He made sickle cell anemia. He made heart trouble. He made, uh, uh, what is this the white race have? Uh, where the, the males, they have this, I can't even think of it, but where they have this bleeding disease if they're cut they bleed, they'll bleed to death. I can't even think of it, but you know what I'm talking about. So if God was behind the scene doing this, he either fucked up or he think it's a funny thing to do this kind of stuff. But the average Christian don't want to hear that kind of stuff. But 
this God that we worship, how do we, it's funny, we start talking about this and, and I, I brought up the subject. Why do Christians, especially black people, when we pray, we'll have to tell this God, there are some preachers will say, Lord, go in the hospital, do this, touch and heal and do this. So why does this uh, omnipotent God have to be told what to do. How you gonna tell God to go in the sick room, or go in the hospital and heal somebody, uh, touch and heal? That, that don't make sense that you have to tell God what to do. But I guess we, I don't know, we don't realize what we're saying because we are saying what we heard somebody else say. We hear their prayers and it sound good, so we say it too. Because I, I I do that. I'll say some stuff that I heard my grandmother say, and I said, "Ooh, dang, I'm sounding like me, mom." I don't say, "Oh, Father God," I don't say, "Oh, damn, me, mom used to say that." No, just, ooh, stop it! Don't do that. But that's what we do, and that's how. The sayings and the stories just pass from generation to generation. And I don't know if it's going to ever, well, it'll, it'll finally die out. I think it will because we're not talking as much as a race of people. So the stories are not being told because uh, you got the, even the little babies, they got their little cell phones and they're scrolling and punching things. So the the um, stories that the ancestors told they're not being told to the children so that's going to die out and i wonder i i guess it's going to stop with with my generation we are the last ones to tell the story yeah nobody's telling any stories anymore I mean, I guess you could say the the children will get a story. They'll get someone else's version of it, but the family version of the stories are not being told simply because no one wants to listen to the elders. They don't even want us to tell our stories. I went to a, a family get-together about maybe two months ago and the older people which was me my sister and my oldest brother well yeah yeah we were the old older people there and they kind of babied us and they fixed our plates and they made sure we had a, a seat on a sofa that wasn't too low and and i said wow look at us we are the old people now so but nobody wanted to hear what we had to say they they wanted to challenge us in a domino game and a bit whiz game and i think yeah the older people we did beat them but we got kind of tired quick so we couldn't hang with the the younger people but our stories, nobody wants to hear them anymore, so I don't know. But take the time to listen to the older people and ask them about what they remember. If if you have older people in your family, people who are in their 60s, because believe it or not, it's not that many people that lived through the Jim Crow era, and I did. I remember those times, and they, they were rough times, and I remember my mother used to clean houses for the white people, and what, the time she did take us to work with her, we sat in a chair the whole time she was cleaning. I can't say she was cleaning all day. But I remember my mother couldn't leave when she finished cleaning. It was a certain amount of time she had to stay there. I remember me and my sister sat there all day. And this white woman said, Mabel, 
How do you make them be still all this time? Do they want a sandwich or something? My mother said, no. That's what she would say. No. Yes. They find no. And we didn't say a word. Can you believe my mother said yes and no? Oh. But my daddy wasn't like that. Ooh, he hated white people. He hated hated them with a passion. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't tend to drift that way. But just thinking about this thing with 60 Minutes, where they are uh, able to breed and select a human that is resistant to different types of illnesses. So... This you, they can make a a baby that will not catch AIDS. He will not catch have, uh, contract cancer. So he's you got this guy, this baby that won't get sick, but he will die. So it kind of make you almost believe in the story of creation, where. Eve and Adam ate of the, the uh, didn't eat the tree of life. And that's why we die. But the story is kind of conveniently written. But anyway, I don't know. That's the best answer is I don't know. But I always pr propose to the universe how come and what if. And I guess that's why... The scientists are people who are inventors, how they come up and they create things because you, they think about what if and what, how come this doesn't do this. And they propose it and they, they work on it some work a whole lifetime. But when they get a team of people that think like them, their mind working together, they figure it out. So... I think it's a great thing what man has done, but there's still a lot of wrong things we have done, too. But anyway, that's all I was talking about. I'm not talking about nothing. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.